I grew a fucking pole and have a port to jump on. Yo, yo, welcome to the first episode of In the Kitchen with Chee, man. I got my man Cecil, a real old down by law nigga, man. Reside right now on the east side. Came up on the east side, been in the three. You know what I'm saying? He do his thing, you know what I mean? He do his shit, do his thing with the coke and shit. We're gonna ask him a few questions, you know what I'm saying? How he got where he at and where he at today with smoking cocaine and fucking with the streets and shit, man. So, what's up, Cecil? Introduce yourself, man. My name is Cecil. All right, then. I'm going to tell you how, how, how a little part of it, how I got started. I ran to my cousin. I was 16. He told me that, and I didn't listen. What did he tell you? He said, don't try this right here. It was the pipe and everything. And I look, I was curious. Every day he was smoking. I said, damn, what my cousin doing? You again, how or what? So I say, shit. I asked him again. He said, you don't want this, but I fucked around and snuck, and when it did it myself, life went backwards, then money, dope, everything. Did you ever have a point in time that so you were up on the dope? Like, you feel like you you can handle smoking dope and goddamn get money at the same time? It worked it for the first first two years. It started like in 90, 91, but once, once 91 left, I wasn't making it like that. People weren't getting it till you had to take it or, or trick or whatever. But yeah, it went backwards then. It was, it was real good at first. Money and smoking, you were surviving then. But once I got on it back, ain't no saving nothing. You just out there just barely getting it then. How long it took you? When, you know what I mean? How long you hit it? How long I hit it? Yeah, like here from smoking from your peers and your people and your mama and shit. Oh yeah, the closet. Okay, yeah, I did that. Still I wearing polo shit, fresh and Gucci watches. So I was closet. I, I hid for like two years and then people started watching me sell your shit, selling my watch shit like that, all that. My radio, sold my radio, my T V I you say he doing some some other than we that's when you fuck up, when you start selling your shit. That's how you got caught. Closet, ain't no closet no more. You act down once you sell this shit. Yeah. 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 You in the game. Damn, bitch, you got down. You ever lost something from me, like a, a good wife or a girlfriend or some shit like that? Oh, yeah. Two wives. Yeah. But, folk, but, but the girls, they'll be spending. First, they'll buy you some clothes and shoes. Yeah, I said, okay, he like clothes and shoes. And you take them goddamn clothes and shoes and sell them, then you tell them, just give me the money and let me go and buy me something. They figure it out. After they figure it out like that, they leave you. And none of them gonna stay with you long. Cause you'll bring them down. Four. Yeah. That shit, you ain't never been in love with no lady like did the same thing you did? One time, man, and we I was at Little Rock and we we both were doing the same. That's bad when both of y'all was doing it because you really ain't going to have nothing because both of y'all got to have the same thing, same cigarettes and same pills, whatever. Go all go with it. You're going to be in the street quicker with both of y'all than one of y'all. It best to be just one smoke. Okay. Two of y'all, you really going to the dungeon because everything, you know if you selling everything, she gonna sell the other half of her. <laughs> so ain't shit you gonna have. <laughs> it's, it's real. Yeah, <laughs> it's for real. You know, you best get somebody ain't smoking <laughs> with you. That way half the shit will be done. Still all of it. Yeah. Damn, what's the most shit you ever lost? Shit. Bitch, you like, damn, I just wish I could get kicked back. Traded off a crack. Radio. My, I had a, a beatbox radio one time. You know, the walk around. Yeah. Man, I, I ain't never seen that radio no more. That's the only one. Yeah. That hurt me, that beatbox radio. <laughs> and I knew I wanted that goddamn radio. Still, yeah. <laughs> that damn dope took it, boy. For real. Yeah. yeah no more walking around with that motherfucker. It was old. Hey, where's your radio? It's old. Remember the nigga you sold it to? Yeah. Damn. So what do you feel about 
today's dope boy or dope boy that you know what I mean? What do you feel about him? Do you hate him or do you despise him? No, it, it, I, I ain't mad at him. It, that's on you. When you choose to do that, that's you doing that. They ain't make, they ain't calling you saying, God damn, come and buy a hundred dollar worth of dope. Come and credit your shit. You coming to get that. They, you do it. Simple as that. It's your fault. <laughs> Ain't nobody come looking you down here, nigga. Credit this. You credit it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm facts, I'm facts, I'm facts. There it is. Nigga ain't saying pawn your shit, pawn your car. You do it. But what, what was the most side of town, the best side of the town, was the best dope that you consider yourself got? From the better deal, you know what I mean? The most quality, the number one shit. In, in the cave. In the cave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in the cave. That's where I was getting it all from. You know, it ventured to Atlanta? Yeah, Elder Ridge. When I went to Elder Ridge and Tentwood, I, I was straight in them two spots. Especially Elder Ridge. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, ever got a chance to just finish um, any beef with the down, out, down by the law boys or the um, Miami boys? What you mean? Have you ever ran across like the Miami boys? You know what I mean? Back in the goddamn early 90s, fucking with the dope. You know what I mean? So dope for the Miami boys or anything like that. Yeah, I had one, 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 when I was in Techwood, Miami boy in front of me, some weed. They had that weed too. And envelopes this long. So I ran off on the Miami boys. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah, shit. Damn. Get the sack. They were envelopes too. So what, that was just that, that was just friend niggas? Yeah, they, Miami boys came through that motherfucker, but they started killing them niggas. They started killing Miami boys and the police, putting them in Trump, burning the cars up. Niggas from Georgia, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And look, Boulevard and Edgewood, Miami boys tried to take all the Boy, they started killing them niggas. Tentwood would kill them. Yeah. So I say, before they started killing them, I started getting shit from them. Yeah. What that shit you got right now in your hand? Oh yeah, it's called it's called I call it a thing. It's a thing. Really? Yeah. See, back in the day, they used got down you and Tim was all calling shit. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Break the pipe out of the car and shit. You know what I mean? Back in the project and, and shit. And, and screws, I was growing up. Yeah. And screw cans. Baller. Yeah, man, they used to, I remember old, the old TV, man, nigga, you go in the house and you know nigga smoke dope when they got half an antenna in that motherfucker. Break that shit off, put the Brillo down in there, yeah. But if you don't have that, that little tip, burn it. You see them nigga with lip. That's how you know a nigga was smoking an antenna and all this shit was red. Yeah, that's God, that's some nigga shit was, woo that's that nigga got that antenna hot, boy. <laughs> Hot antennas. That's how you know when niggas on antennas, them lips be fucked up. Yeah. Bleeding to death right there. Damn, man. That be so good, them niggas had to burn them lips. <laughs> but shit, it like this. If you can go back and listen to you, this, the cousin who told you don't fuck with that motherfucker, would you listen to that nigga today? Yeah, and I wish I would have, because I would have had more if I'd have listened to him, especially my clothes. Yeah, he was right. Really and he on. was smoking and telling me not to. Yeah. I used to smoke with my dad. You know, and that's when I got bad. Smoking with your dad. Nigga, that's real. Damn, I ain't know that yeah, shit. Yeah. Me and my dad smoked together. My mom used to say, y'all fight until y'all smoke that junk. He said, y'all smoke that junk to get along. Yeah, we used to fight all the time, too. Yeah, how did it you smoking with your dad, though? Cause my whole daddy side smoked it. So I'm over there in Kirkwood on Lakeview. Yeah. His brother, he got, you know, the one that was in prison. I was smoking with him and the other 12, the oldest one I went, cause that nigga was doing the heroin. So that was too grown for me. But all my uncles and my dad, that's how I smoked with them. Man, man, how you grow up? Shit, I was probably about 20, 19, up in there, I got real young. Yeah, I, I was young. <clears throat> Shit, it's, it's, it's niggas smoking um, dope young, younger than that, young though, but you know what I mean, they ain't experienced no life. It's a lot of people smoke dope, start smoking dope in the army and shit, you know what I mean, they experience life. 
you know, when Dope first came, I understand it, it hit like, you know what I mean? It hit like new on the scene, you know what I mean? It just went ugly. It wasn't no such thing as a J back then. It was like in the eight, early 80s, because that shit started tearing shit down. So we hit, look how the metal was going. He said metal was going to fight because it was dope. Get, get killed over there. Yeah. Go through that motherfucker walking trying to find something. You're going to get killed. 